Dear scientist, in this video you will get a deep understanding of the antimetabolites structure, function, and resistance. Subscribe to stay updated on cancer biology. The video is divided into two levels, beginner and intermediate. Let's start with the beginner level. The antimetabolites are one of the five families of chemotherapy that are used to treat cancer patients. As you can see, we will use this symbol instead for the sake of illustration. Cancer cells are mutated cells that are constantly dividing and the antimetabolites are highly uptaken by these cells, leading to their death. Now let's move to the structure. But first, do you know what a metabolite is? A metabolite can refer to a nucleotide or an intermediate form of it needed for DNA and RNA synthesis. And the same goes for the amino acids that are used to make proteins. We will only focus on the DNA metabolites as they are highly needed and metabolized by the dividing cells. Antimetabolites are chemically similar to metabolites so that they can fool the cell into believing that they are some of its naturally present building blocks. They can do the latter via two ways. First, by inhibiting a metabolic reaction. For example, DNA metabolites are constantly modified to suit different functions like the famous conversion of uracil into thymine. The antimetabolites can be mistakenly recognized by the enzyme, leading to the inhibition of the metabolic process, which subsequently leads to a lack of thymines. The second mechanism by which antimetabolites can damage the cell is if we assumed or imagined the DNA as a building, one of the antimetabolites can be mistakenly integrated as a building block in the DNA, damaging its structure and leading to the cell death. Cancer cells can resist those two killing mechanisms with the following. First, it can increase the number of enzymes to compensate the inhibited enzyme. Secondly, it can increase the production of repair enzymes that detect and remove the false nucleotide. Congratulations, now you've finished the first cycle. Before moving to the intermediate phase, please leave a like and subscribe. Your Zirco support is highly appreciated. Now let's start the intermediate level with a brief intro. When the antimetabolites are administered as an intravenous injection, to a cancer patient, they travel in the blood vessels and exit from the small capillaries entering the cancer cells by the nucleotide transporters. Now let's see the chemical structure of this family. There are only three types of anti-cancer antimetabolites based on their structures. The first type is the pyrimidine analogues. The second type is the purine analogues, which are similar to the adenine and guanine. The third type is folate analogues, also known as B9 analogues. By the way, the folate metabolites are critically needed for the nucleotide synthesis in the cell. Let's start with the first two types. Every nucleotide in the DNA is formed of a five-membered ring of sugar and a nitrogen base that defines the identity of the nucleotide and the phosphate group on the opposite side. Returning back to the two families of nucleotides, the naturally occurring pyrimidine nucleotide has a six-membered ring nitrogen base, while the purines have a five then six-membered rings. Now let's see some examples on the pyrimidine analogues. They consist of the same nucleotide structure except for a floral group that can be attached to the six-membered nitrogen base or it can be attached to the sugar ring. For the purine analogues, they have the same structure of the nucleotide except for having a sulfur group attached to the six-membered ring or a floral group attached to it. The folate structure 
is quite complex, but the same concept we just discussed applies for it. Now let's move to the function. During the DNA replication, the DNA polymerase inserts the complementary bases opposite to each nucleotide in the template strand, and the antimetabolites can be mistakenly inserted into the DNA strand, leading to either a deformation of the structure of the DNA or a complete arrest for the polymerase, and this depends on the type of the antimetabolite. As we saw how the nucleotide analogs can damage the DNA during replication, on the other side of the table there is an illustration for their enzymatic inhibition in which the folate analogs participate. Let's see an example on the folate analog cytotoxic action. Naturally occurring folate in the cell is like a bow that shoots a single carbon on other compounds contributing to the nucleotide synthesis. First, the folate is reduced by an enzyme called DHFR turning into tetrahydrofolate. After this conversion, another enzyme loads it with a carbon unit. This carbon unit can be thrown on uracil for example, transforming it into thymine needed for DNA synthesis. However, the folate analogs bind and block the DHFR from converting true intrinsic folates into their active forms. And now, as I promised you in the previous video, let's compare between the antimetabolites and the alkylating agents. In terms of the mechanism of action, the antimetabolites can only damage the DNA strand during replication, unlike the alkylating agents, which bind and prevent the separation of the double stranded DNA, inhibiting the transcription, which is a vital process for the cell at any state. Now let's move to the cell cycle and as you probably concluded, the antimetabolites lead to the cell death or arrest in the S phase because it largely depends on the DNA replication that happens in this phase, while the alkylating agents can lead to the death or arrest at different phases of the cell cycle. The tumors that can be targeted by the two families can differ. The antimetabolites usually used with tumors that have fast dividing rate while the alkylating agents are used for both fast dividing and slow dividing. This is one of the reasons it's prescribed for the slow proliferative brain tumors. Congratulations, you have successfully finished the two cycles of the antimetabolites. If you are interested in cancer research and you want to have a background on cancer biology, always check in the description for a course that will be available on August 2023. And for now, what do you think, which is more effective, the antimetabolites or the mitotic inhibitors?